Morning, brothers and sisters. Blessings to you in Jesus' name. It's uh, good to be meeting together with the people of God and um, for the Spirit of God to work in our midst, for God to accomplish His purposes uh, in us. And that's His desire um, in our lives that He would accomplish His purposes, that His goals and the things that are pleasing to Him would be done in us, and that's, uh, that's what's been happening, and I hope it will continue here as we look at the, um, the last message in the series on marriage and houses. We've been comparing having a good house to having a good marriage, and we've covered, covered quite a few things here. I'll try to go off of memory as best I can. We talked about location, we talked about design, uh, we talked about materials and tools, we talked about workmanship, we talked about maintenance and repairs. I'm not sure if I'm missing one, I'm not, I'm not certain, I should have wrote, written them all down, but I didn't. And um, today we're going to look at the subject of improvements. We're going to look at improvements as it relates to houses and marriage. Um, improvements, I have two general categories that we want to look at, which would be um, looking at uh, remodeling and additions. And think about maintenance, that's keeping the house in good functional condition, just kind of keeping things working. Repairs are fixing problems to make the house the way it was before, but improvements are making things better, better than they were before. Let's have a word of prayer together here before we go any further. Father, we're coming to your throne here today, seeking your face and looking for your help. We're praying that your spirit might work in our midst here. Lord, you know the need in every heart here today. You know the the situations, the challenges that are we're facing, um, you know, the, the marriages and the families. Father, you know what it is that you want to accomplish in us today. We pray that you would um, help to open our ears and our hearts. We might be able to hear what you have to share with us. We pray for understanding. We pray for enlightenment. Pray, Father, that you would show us especially the the things where we need to make changes, where we need to turn from anything in our lives, which is not what it should be, uh, so that we can experience your healing and your cleansing and your goodness and your blessing, Father, in the fullness of the filling of your spirit. Just ask you to work here for your own glory and for your purposes. We pray they would be accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Improvements. Uh, I would say most of us in our lives, we have a desire for things to get better. And I think in general that that is a good desire. I think it can be out of balance perhaps in some ways, but there, there's something in us that we want to better ourselves. And um, it's a good thing to, uh, to want to be better than before. I guess a question to ask you here as you look at your marriage relationship, would you like to see improvement in your marriage? Is that something that you would desire? It's really interesting as you interact with people and talk with a lot of different people, you find that there are there's some married people who are very, very discouraged. They are very down. They don't feel good about things. Um, nothing seems to change for them. There's no progress. Uh, they feel like their, their marriage relationship is, is hopeless, that um, there's nothing that could be done. There, there's no way that it could be different. They are feeling powerless. They are feeling defeated. They are discouraged. And it's just a very, it's a very hard place to be. But I want to say this. 
your marriage can get better. And improvement is definitely possible for you and for your spouse. So I want to encourage you, if you're feeling somewhat that way, um, do not give up and do not lose heart. Improvement is not only possible, but it is actually God's desire. It is actually the thing that God wants to do. And it's the thing that he will help to bring in your marriage relationship as you and your spouse look to him and uh, depend on him to work in you. The question is this, with improvement, how will it happen? Yes, it's possible. I would imagine if we asked here, I would think many of us would believe, yes, it is actually possible. Things could get better. But how is it going to happen? Improvement begins with you. Improvement begins with you. Now, for many people, uh, it is very easy for them to see the flaws and the faults and the problems of their spouse. That's relatively easy to do. Okay? You can see those. They're obvious to you. And uh, you think to yourself, um, if my spouse would be different, if my spouse would change, we would have a better marriage. We would have a better relationship. Okay? Things would be much better for us. And I, I would suspect that, that is, that's actually correct, what you are thinking. But let me repeat what I said. Improvement begins with you. And that is critically important for us to understand. It begins with you because you can change you. You can't change your spouse, but you can change you. You can deal with your own problems. You can deal with your own challenges. You can address the things in your own life that need to change. Um, God wants you to change. God wants you to grow. God wants you to make progress. And as that happens, it is going to have a positive effect on your relationship with your spouse. A couple of different concepts that we want to cover here today. Um, the first one is in relation to building. I've been talking about that somewhat throughout the series, but going to focus on it here a little bit today. Uh, in the area of improvements, it requires building, building actions, building skills. And the thing that the Bible tells us regarding that is the word is edification. Edification, it's a big word that when we hear it, we may not know what it means. It simply means to build up. Okay, To edify is to build up. And that is something that the Scripture actually talks quite a bit about. First of all, you are to build up yourself as a believer in Jesus Christ. This is in uh, Jude, in the book of Jude, verse 20. He says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You building up yourself on your most holy faith. And uh, we heard just recently uh, in Peter about how we're to add fa uh, to faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, temperance patience, and patience godliness, and, and on and on it goes. There is, a, there is a building upon, there is an adding to that needs to be happening in your life. Acts 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them 
which are sanctified. God is able to build you up. God, by the word of his grace, by the grace of God, he is able to build you up, to make you stronger, to make you um, better able to serve him and to experience his goodness and his grace in your life. So important there to understand. Feeding on the word of God. Because the word of God, when it gets in your heart, it will accomplish the purposes that God has for it. And it will make a difference in you. And so when you look at your life, you have a responsibility to build yourself up in the faith. There are things that you can do. Um, spiritual growth is something you should be pursuing in your life. You should be dealing with the problems in your life, with the sin in your life. It is there, if it's there, you should be dealing with those things and addressing them and uh, seeking God for his help and for his work in you. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this a little bit later on. But you are to build yourself up. And then the other part of that is you are to build others up. And I want to apply that specifically in this message to your spouse. Romans 14, verse 19, the Bible says this, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Follow after those things. Pursue those things. Do those things. Wouldn't it be nice in your marriage if there was peace and you were building each other up? Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be beautiful? It is beautiful. And it is what you need to do. Okay? It is nice. It is wonderful when we have peace peace in our marriage, and we're working to encourage one another. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, knowledge puffs up, the Bible says, but charity edifieth. Charity builds up. Love builds. There are a lot of concepts when you talk about love, especially in, in the area of marriage. And there are a number of different dynamics there, it is true. But charity, love, edifies. It strengthens. It builds. It helps. That's, that's the nature of true love. Romans 15, verse 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good. That is the good of your neighbor or the good of your spouse for his or her edification. Please the other person for their good, for their edification, so that you can build that person up. Ephesians 4 verse 29, let no corrupt communication Proceed out of your mouth. Now there is one to just pause and think about itself in your marriage. Don't let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Don't, don't let that happen. But the communication should be that which is good to the use of of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers okay in your marriage relationship the things that you say stop and think the things that you say are they corrupt are they bad do they create problems and do they create trouble and do they create strife and difficulty or are they good are they good for your spouse do they build up your spouse does it bring grace to your spouse 
Some specifics here as far as what it means to build up your spouse. We talked about the tools. I'm wondering, do you remember any of the tools? Are you using the tools in your marriage? Or are the tools just in the toolbox? Do you remember any of the tools? I think we covered seven of them, and there may be others beyond, certainly beyond what we covered. Do you remember any of them? Give you a chance. A little rusty. Yes. Okay. Humility is, is in one of them. Yes, it would be. I think it could be maybe in a couple, but in the area of honoring your spouse as opposed to honoring yourself and exalting yourself. So there's a good one. Any others you can think of? Yes. Forgiveness. Forgiveness okay. Very good. Um, we talked a lot about that, and, and I don't, don't know if I covered that in the tools or not, but yeah, definitely forgiveness is a critical tool for us. Yes, James. Communicating. Communicating was a tool, okay? Being able to share with each other. Uh, I have pleasing, remember? Pleasing your spouse, honoring your spouse, communicating, thanking, touching, working, laughing, and there are others as we were talking about those. The tools are really good way. If you're going to build, you need tools, okay? You have to use the tools to be able to build your spouse up. One that I want to focus on here in, in um, specifically in building up your spouse, edifying, is affirming that which is good and right in your spouse, and this is, this is so valuable. Yeah, in some relationships, some marriage relationships, it's primarily negative. It's negative, it's critical, it's fault-finding, it's insulting, and that's the way the relationship works. It's, it's not fun to live like that. It's not pleasant. It becomes very tiresome after a while when there's this constant barrage of the negative and uh, no one really wants to hear that all the time. Here's something very practical that you can do that will make a difference in your marriage relationship. Find something good about your spouse and tell your spouse about it. This is something that I appreciate about you. This is something about you that is a, is a beautiful quality, is a, is a good thing. And I want to tell you about it. Find one and tell it. Do it today. Do it again tomorrow. Find another one. Do it again the day after that. Begin to make it a regular part of your interaction with your spouse. And if you want to say something negative to your spouse, and th those, those times will come where you want to say something negative, before you blurt it out, think it through. Is this actually something God wants me to say to my spouse? If he wants me to, then I, I can say that. But so often these things are done out of the emotion of the moment, out of very little thought, very little consideration for the effect of what is actually going to result from words that are spoken which are not necessary, are not helpful, and actually are destructive. Uh, we all need encouragement. No one needs constant criticism. It is not helpful. And so... We need to be sharing the truth of God's word to bring help. I guess a question for you to think about when we think about edification. Are you a builder in your marriage relationship or are you a destroyer? Which are you? When it comes to your own marriage, are you a builder or are you a destroyer? I want to encourage you to start building, and to keep building. 
and uh, you will see progress in the future. So that's building. We want to look now at the two categories of improvements here. Um, one is remodeling and the other is additions. Okay? Remodeling is improving that which already exists. Here's a room, here's a, here's a situation. I am going to make this thing better. That's remodeling. Okay? And then additions would be adding on. These are new things, and we'll cover those as well. But regardless of which it is, it means doing something new. Um, maybe a new kitchen, new flooring, uh, a new addition, whatever it is. Now, we're all living in some type of a home, and uh, I guess I'll ask you this question. Do you know why it is that many people do not do improvements to their home. There are many people that in their home, they never do improvements. I'm talking about the physical house now. Do you know why that is? They never do any improvements. Any, any thoughts? They don't like change? Okay. Yeah, I hadn't even thought of that. That's true. One is we're just comfortable the way it is. It costs money, okay? It, it can be expensive to do improvements. And kind of along with that is it takes work, okay? Right now, we're in the middle of doing some uh, new carpet in our home. And I'll just share with you a little free advice. If you're going to replace carpet, it's best to do it before you move in. Because once you're in, everything has to move. Everything in that room. We're doing six different areas of carpet. And uh, I'm enjoying the new carpet, but I'm also feeling the work of moving and of ripping carpet out and removing tack strip. It takes work. It is a job. And so if you think in your marriage that it's going to get better some, some magic way, some, some inexplainable way, um, it's just going to get better I would say to you that it doesn't usually happen that way. You have to invest in your marriage relationship. You have to work to make the improvements. Okay, let's, let's think about remodeling. Remodeling is replacing the old with the new. It's upgrading. It's refreshing. It's revamping. It's updating. And in marriage, it's getting rid of the old things that are not working and replacing them with new things that work. And I would say probably most of us here, maybe not all the children, but most of us have had uh, some type of remodeling in our homes at some point in time. You, you know what it's like to paint the room, okay? To get maybe a new kitchen, uh, some new flooring or whatever it may be, new siding on the house. Gives a fresh, clean, updated look. It's nice. It's enjoyable, okay? It, it's something that is pleasant, at least to the typical person. Did you realize that God wants to do some remodeling in your life? He wants to do a work in your, in your life. Now, a lot of the remodeling in houses is at the surface level, right? You paint walls, that's a new surface, but God goes really deep in the remodeling. God goes to the inside first. Okay? God wants to work on the inside first and change that. He's also going to change the outside. But he works first on the inside, making the changes. Ephesians chapter 4. I would encourage you to turn to this passage. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 to 24, gives us, gives us um, God's plan here for remodeling in your life. Ephesians 4, 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation or, or the former life that you had, your former conduct, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, 
which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Out with the old, in with the new. Uh, I'll say this, one of the best ways to be happy with your spouse is to be happy with yourself. If you are not happy with yourself, if you yourself are not living a life as you should, it's going to be difficult to be happy with your spouse. But when you're living your life for the glory of God, in righteousness and true holiness, in obedience to God, when you are actually doing the will of God, when you are cleansing yourself with the blood of Christ from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, when you know that your heart is right with God, when you're experiencing the grace of God every day, God meets every need. You're able to rejoice in the God of your salvation. You have joy in your heart. God is doing something in you. There's another verse here in 3 John. And I don't know what, how you feel about the health and wealth gospel and the prosperity gospel. Um, a lot of that's really out of balance and really kind of far out. But there is something about prosperity in the scripture that we need to understand and experience. And it's in 3 John verse 2, where John writes, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. That's my wish for you today. My wish for you is that your soul would prosper and that as your soul prospers, your life would prosper and uh, that you would experience the blessing of God, that you would be a whole and a healthy person. If you're just treading water uh, spiritually, if you're just drifting along, if you're just, just barely going day after day, if you're walking in the flesh, you're not walking in the spirit, you're not going to be spiritually happy. Okay? You're not going to be fulfilled. You're not going to prosper in your life. And if you don't prosper in your soul, you're not going to prosper in your marriage. Think about it. It's harder for my marriage to be better than me. Right? It's, it's, that's not very likely. If, if I'm not healthy, if I'm not prospering in my soul, how could I expect my marriage to prosper? This might seem obvious, but there are a lot of people that don't understand it, and that's this. The problems that I am having with my spouse, in, in many cases, not in all cases, but in, in many cases, are due to problems that I am having with me. Okay? They're problems that I have in my own heart. They're issues that I have in my life. I want you to look inside of yourself. What do you see? As you look at, at yourself today, what do you see? Do you see things like um, bitterness, anger, fear, hatred, greed, lust, worry, rebellion? When you look inside of you, what are you seeing? If I'm dealing with those types of things, if that's what's happening in my heart and in my life, it's going to affect the way that I relate with my spouse. It has to, okay? Because my heart isn't right with God. I've got a problem in me. It's going to become a problem to a greater or lesser extent with my spouse. Uh, my marriage is my wife and me. It's just the two of us. That's our marriage, okay? It, it, it's, it's up to us what the marriage is going to be like. If I'm not healthy, if she's not healthy, how are we going to have a good and healthy marriage? Look back at Ephesians 4, 22. Put off the former conversation. Put it off, put it away, get rid of it, get it out of your life. Put that off. 
Get it out. The old man, the corrupt man, according to the deceitful lust. That's me. That's me before I was a believer. The old man, the old Steve. I'm to put it off. You're to put it off. And be renewed. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Remember the, the verse there in Romans chapter 12. That you may be re renewed. Um, let me start at the beginning. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I hope I got that right. I'm not sure if I did. But the transform part is the part that I want to focus on. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's, it's right here as well in uh, verse 23 in Ephesians 4. There is a renewing of your thinking. Any thinking that you have which is not in alignment with the will of God, with the, with the thoughts that God wants you to have, it's going to have a negative effect on you. Okay, it, it, That thinking needs to be renewed. Get rid of the old. Replace with the new. And put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It's beautiful. That's God's will for you. Righteousness and true holiness. That you might delight in the Lord your God every single day. I, I want to make this just as clear as I can. God wants us to be whole. He wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be righteous. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to have joy and peace. He wants us to be free of bondage. He wants us to prosper in the soul. That's what God wants for you. And if it's not reality for you, you need to be asking God, God, what is wrong here? Okay, what is wrong? How do I correct it? What can I actually do? Psalm 139, uh, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God, you search me. You show me what is wrong so that it can be corrected and you can lead me in the everlasting way. You've got to face your problems, brothers and sisters. Your problems, not your spouse's problems. That, that is an issue. We can't, we can't ignore it. But you've got to face your own problems. You've got to be prospering in your soul. And uh, I believe you will see improvement in your marriage relationship. So God's remodeling is on the inside of you and it affects the outside of you. It affects all of you. And you, you uh, experience that newness, that newness of life that the scripture talks about. So that's remodeling. Also want to talk about additions. And when we talk about additions, we're talking about new things now. Brand new things, better things, something new that you've never previously experienced or maybe uh, a broadening of experience, uh, an expanding of your experience. It's entering new territory, okay? new horizons, uh, new things. It's going places in your marriage relationship that you have never gone before. Here are some practical things that you could add to your marriage. And if you're doing these, terrific. But if you're not, these are some things that you could add and uh, they will be helpful in your marriage relationship. Reading the scriptures together, praying together as a family. Okay, very valuable, very helpful. And um, brother, it's your responsibility as the husband, as the father, to lead and to make it happen. And uh, it, takes, it takes some effort. But it's going to produce fruit. It is going to produce fruit in your marriage. It's going to produce fruit in your family. 
and uh, it is going to be something that is very beneficial. Another one is being part of the meetings and the life of the church. Okay, there are too many Christians entirely that seem to be very uncommitted as far as their involvement in the local church. And um, it's, it's problematic in a number of ways. But I would say this, uh, those that hurt the most are the people themselves who are not participating in the assembly of the believers. You're, you're missing something. Okay? There's something for you that you are missing and you're not able to experience the benefit and the blessing. Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. We're not to forsake that. It's something that we're to pursue, that we are to, to participate in and be involved in. Uh, as says, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And that's one of the things that happens when we meet together is that we're able to exhort and challenge and encourage one another. It's important for this meeting, Sunday morning as we meet, but there are other meetings of the body that I would encourage you to be a part of. And um, again, it's up to the man, it's up to the husband, it's up to the father to make sure that it happens. Okay, It's your responsibility and you need to make sure that that is something you're participating in. So we have those. We also have sharing your heart openly and honestly with your spouse. Being able to share from the heart level, opening yourself up. This is how I feel. This is what's happening in me. Just, just taking the curtain down and allowing your spouse to look right into your heart. Saying what's happening, how you feel, your struggles, your joys. If you've never shared at that level, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, it's something that God actually wants in the marriage relationship. It's a little scary because I don't know what my spouse is going to say. I don't know what my spouse is going to do. My spouse could use some of those things against me. And so it, if you can get to the point of open sharing, and that's, that's a communication that will bond your hearts together and uh, it, will, it will help you in your marriage. Another addition would be finding uh, new and enjoyable things that you can do together as a couple. What are some things we can do that maybe we haven't done before, but things that would be things that we could enjoy, things that would be beneficial? Uh, what could we actually do? Spend some time thinking about some of those things and, and um, pursue them. And you could probably think of some other additions beyond these, and if you can think of them, I would encourage you to, to do them. Okay, if, if there are things you see that can be added that will be a blessing and a benefit to your relationship, I want you to um, pursue those things. And a lot of these things are really for our benefit as husband and wife. But I want to go beyond this and I want you to set your eyes beyond yourself here for a minute. I want you to see that in your marriage relationship, it's bigger than you. Okay. It is bigger than you and your spouse. Your marriage, your marriage, can have a tremendous impact, a positive impact on your children, on your family, on your neighbors, on the church, and even the world. The potential impact of your marriage is bigger perhaps than you ever considered. And I want you to think about that. Now you may say to yourself, um, yeah, my, my, marriage, my marriage is a mess. It's a failure. Uh, we can't have a positive impact on others. 
But I'd say this, wherever you are, wherever you are in your marriage relationship, imagine this. Imagine you and your spouse seeking God. Imagine God working in your heart, in the heart of your spouse. Imagine the transformation, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in you, in your life, in your marriage. Imagine the problems that you have starting to get worked out, starting to get straightened out. You're seeing progress. You're seeing movement in the right direction. That can happen. And when it happens, you will have something to share. Okay? You will be able to testify to the things that God is doing in your heart and in your life. You could say, this is where we were. And this is where we are by the grace of God. This is what God has done for us. Don't you realize that the world is... is looking desperately, desperately for people, for marriages, for families that show them that there is a God in heaven, okay? That there is a good and a right way to live, that there is hope even for them, for something better. You are the light of the world. You are the city that's set on a hill. You are the salt of the earth. Uh, life isn't all just about me and our marriage. It's about the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and the need for Christ to be magnified in you. It's about doing the will of God. I just want to I want to encourage you. I want I want you to understand the purposes that God has for you and for your marriage. He wants to do great things and he wants to use you for the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here are some other additions that will make a difference in the world. Testifying to God's marvelous work of salvation and transformation in your life. When you can share from your experience, it is powerful okay, to those that hear it. And it is challenging to them. Sharing truth. Teaching others the truth of the Word of God for their benefit. Presenting Jesus Christ as the way of salvation. Bringing the gospel, not just with the words, with the words, but supported by your life and the light that is shining in you. Serving others as a couple or as a family. Helping people in need. Uh, mentoring others to help them grow and mature and prosper. Showing hospitality, both to the saved and to the lost. And I want to close with this. Um, the scripture says in Romans 12, verse 13, that we're to be given to hospitality. And a question for you is, is your home and is your family a, a place and an environment for hospitality. Um, this is something that we have we've participated in, and uh, I guess I'm really thankful for my wife's interest and her desire to entertain friends and also uh, strangers. I think when it comes to hospitality in our home, the bulk of the work falls on my wife and also on our daughters, and they are having the opportunity to follow in her steps. My heart is also toward hospitality. And I see that there is, there is a way for you to connect with people in an environment different than this one. This is a place God works, but God also works in the home, okay? Also works in those types of relationships, uh, this past Tuesday, we had a number of people at our home. It was my birthday this um, past Tuesday. 55 years old now. 55. It was a happy birthday. Uh, nothing too exciting, but we had a campfire. 
We had some different people over. People, some we've known for a while and others we've just come to know recently. But it was a time of sharing. It was a time of interaction. Uh, it's just a time of trying to build some relationships just trying to teach them the song, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. I don't, I don't know if you, do you know that song, that campfire song. Nobody knew it, okay, except me and I think some of my family. But the rest, they all looked with a blank stare. But my desire in that meeting was to be the spark. To be the spark that gets the fire going. Where the fire of God's work in people's lives can actually start and go ablaze. Um, do you realize how surprising, how alluring, how pleasing it is for people around you to see a happy, godly marriage and family? It makes a difference. It really does. And by God's grace, may they see it in you. That's all that I have to share um, today. Give an opportunity if there's any response, any correction or a question or comment. We'll give you an opportunity here at this time. That's okay, brother. I want to thank you, Steve, for making the effort to <clears throat> excuse me, share on the marriage, house, homes or ma houses and marriages, whatever, however you said that. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you. You've been a good spark, I think, and I appreciate that very much about you. One thing that we did here, I'm not sure when it started, is a, a small thing, but I think it I think it's, has proved to be a good thing. I'm not, I don't like to talk in the morning, right? So get up out of bed. I don't say anything for probably, I don't know how long. Maybe once you had breakfast and coffee, you can start talking, maybe. But we, for whatever reason, started to say good morning to each other before breakfast. And uh, maybe you do that, I don't know. But that was not something that we did, um, you know. And so we say good morning and look at each other and kind of smirk or laugh, whatever. And it kind of has loosened up things where we can actually have maybe conversation at the breakfast table. Mm -hmm. Maybe you think that's really weird, but that's, that's something that we did. Uh, just, I don't know for sure why, but kind of to stretch our stretches a little bit. And um, so, yeah, just little things like that where we can improve ourselves. I would say that um, for me, I have great, much more need of, in room for improvement than my wife. She's generally a much better person than I am. And uh, she's not faultless, of course. But So just to be able to be humble about it, recognize our faults, and allow. And by the way, God does have a process to refine us. And I do thank him for that. It's painful. It can be hard. and uh, But it's it's for redemption. And so thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Brother Mark. Thank you, Brother uh, Steve. I just really enjoyed the morning here. Uh, I want to tell Elam also thank you for the children's class. It was uh, just some real truth there that you shared that was good for, our, for me and for all of us. And Steve, thank you for the message. And uh, what I see in your life and your family's life, I you know, I think you're your lives just match with what you preach and teach. And I've enjoyed this series and this closing series uh, on the marriage. It has on uh, remodeling and also improving in your marriage. We've been married for a number of years, but I can, I can still improve. So thank you very much. Okay, praise the Lord. Anyone else? Okay, if not, let's stand together, and um, Pastor James, we're going to ask you to close in prayer here, if you would.
and uh, I would like to pray. I believe in specific prayers. I'm going to pray first for those among us that are discouraged and uh, their marriage maybe feels hopeless. And then I'd like to pray for those that are mediocre. And then I'd like to pray for transparency. And then I would like to pray a blessing on the positive impact that God wants to use all of our marriages for, if I may do that. Mm -hmm. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand before you. You already know all of our brokenness. While we try to hide it and cover it, you know who we are in our marriages. And today, I pray for those that are hopeless and broken and where it seems useless and too big to push into the redemptive purpose that you have for their marriages. I pray strength over them in the mm. name of Jesus. Yes. I pray courage to rise up and push back the darkness. I pray for strength to face discouragement, discouraging thoughts, discouragement, discouraging suggestions from the enemy. I pray for, for those to be turned into hope. I pray for joy to come into these marriages. I pray that you would help each one of these to commit to following you through, mm -hmm. to the path, through the path of redemption. And I speak redemption over any marriages here today in the name of Jesus that are struggling, that are depressed, that are discouraged, and that are uh, feeling hopeless. Let hope rise up inside of you. I pray today for those that are mediocre and passive. Lord, I pray that you'll put a passion into, into their hearts, into their marriages, to rebuild the passion that once was there, that may have been lost. I pray that you'll help us as men to especially lead the way here, where we would be able to, to uh, live joyfully with the wife of our youth. We know the enemy tries to put out the love and the passion, and so I pray for passion to rise up. Mm -hmm. Pray for transparency. In our marriages, today there's much darkness around us that wants to creep into our connections between husband and wife, especially on the moral level. I pray, Lord, for healthy lives, connections, intimacy. I pray wherever there is, there is uh, infidelity, I command it and declare it to be exposed in the name of Jesus for redemption and for the purpose of destroying the works of darkness. Yes. In this very congregation, wherever it's hiding, let light in. Let the mm. light shine. Yes. Father, we thank you that you have made a way for us to be set free from adultery and from pornography and all of the evil that is surrounding us in the world. And so let there be light. And I pray most of all, for the kingdom's sake, let our marriages be a positive impact. You have chosen every marriage in this building to reflect the oneness between Jesus and his church. And may that become a reality for us. Help us to let you form us into a beautiful expression of your love and goodness and let our marriages become that which you have intended and you have originally created them for in the beginning. And may we be a light in this community. May we reach out beyond ourselves and have a positive impact for your glory. We ask it all for your glory and in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay. God bless you.